Hey guys, so I wanted to take some time to go over the latest changes in TypeScript 3.0. There are a couple of new updates that I think are incredible, and TypeScript 3 was released this week. For those of you who have never used TypeScript, you can go on Google and search TypeScript and find a lot of resources about it, but essentially it is types on top of JavaScript. So it allows you to write type safe JavaScript and I've been using it for you know five years or so now and think it's amazing and think everybody who writes large JavaScript projects should consider using TypeScript if they're not already. So let me just go through a couple of the updates here. <sighs> the One of the big ones that they've done is they've allowed you to uh, reference multiple projects from your configuration file. So with TypeScript, uh, TypeScript is a compiler of sorts. So you basically have a configuration. You say, this is how I want to compile my code. Here are the dependencies, etc. And TypeScript will go and compile it and give you errors. And now you're actually able to reference multiple projects from within a config file and that allows the build process to be a lot faster. I don't want to spend too much time on this because if you're just getting into TypeScript, it's not super important for you to know all about this. This is more for the TypeScript pros. Uh, another thing that I really like is this uh, spreading parameter list with tuples. So I've had this situation happen a lot and if you only know JavaScript, you don't understand necessarily what these are, but people in other languages understand generic types and rest arguments. And basically what a generic type is, is it's saying, okay, I know parameter one of the function is going to be of type T1. So if you pass in a string here, then it's going to automatically typecast it to a string and know this is a string. The problem that we've had to date is when you have a function that takes rest arguments, and what I mean by rest arguments is this triple dot here. It means this function can take any number of arguments. It can take 0, 1, 2, 100. It doesn't matter. It can take any number. And when you're trying to write type safe JavaScript, you want to make sure that all the types are covered. And if you can take any type and any number of rest arguments, uh, it's really hard to do that. You can't just manually go out and type a million times. So, like it says here, it says five overloads should probably be enough for anybody. Let me give you another example. Uh, in the framework that I wrote, Platypus TS, we wrote a promise polyfill, and we actually decided that 10 promises into the all function are what you would need to pass. So if you pass 10 promises, uh, more than 10 promises, you won't get types on the 11th or further promise. And that just becomes a pain in the butt. And now some of that can be eliminated with uh, the latest TypeScript. So you can actually say, oh, this generic type is an array, and then the rest parameter is of this array type. So it makes all of this reduced down to this and actually adds more functionality where all of these calls only support up to five generic types. This actually supports any number of generic types and any number of arguments. Way better and way easier to write and also easier to read if you're trying to look at the declarations and know how you can call something. I won't go too far into richer tuple types, but TypeScript allows you to have optional types on the end of your tuples. This can be pretty uh, effective. I don't spend a ton of time doing these tuple types. It's more for uh, passing parameters into functions, so I don't find myself doing things like this very often. This is a big one. Uh, up to this point, TypeScript has had a few issues with errors. And what I mean by that is, since TypeScript is a compiler, it can give you development time errors. So you don't have to code uh, and then run your code and then go in the browser and only to find out that there's an error. TypeScript can find a lot of errors for you. This is why I recommend it over just vanilla JavaScript. 
However, it can be very hard to search through the errors. And if you're used to looking at stack traces, uh, you still know that it's kind of a pain in the butt to go do that. And so TypeScript now has a little bit better errors, a little more concise. Uh, here's a good example. I've seen this a million times. And every time I see this, I want to go drive a car off a cliff because you have to find out and search through this and search through this and say, okay, is this where I need to be looking? And then find the bottom of it finally to know that you passed C as a number in and it's expecting C as a string. And if you were to look at this type, you would know instantaneously, but this things aren't close together like this very often. So oftentimes when I see an error like this, I end up going out and trying to find the type and make my own assumptions about what it needs to be, or I cast it as any, which is highly, highly unrecommended here. And now TypeScript has a better error like this, so it'll give you a link directly to the type, and it will also say, here is the problem, which is great. It doesn't give you this sort of stack trace-like thing, which I think is uh, kind of useless when you're in practice. The other good thing that TypeScript does now is it allows you to, uh, you know, you've had a long day, you've been coding for eight hours, you're starting to make some mistakes. You're typing and oh, you say some very long pro party instead of property. Well, TypeScript will tell you, did you mean some very long property? This is amazing. I've done this so many times. And, you know, I don't notice it while I'm coding, but I might code a few lines and then I have to go back and change it. It's just pesky. And now as you're coding, if you're using VS Code and soon more editors, uh, you'll see the red squigglies and you can go and fix it while you're coding. This is great. Okay, the unknown type. So uh, TypeScript has always had this any type and people actually recommend you don't use it and TypeScript actually has compiler options that force you to not define anything as any and that's usually the standard that I follow because the whole point of TypeScript is to have type safe JavaScript and when you use any type you actually just eliminate the type safety altogether so it's kind of a uh, an anti-pattern to use any in TypeScript but sometimes you find yourself needing to do it. Well, TypeScript put out this unknown type, which is actually the opposite of any. So where I could define an object as any, and then I could use it however I want, like you can in JavaScript, now I can define a type as unknown, and then I can't use it at all until I've determined exactly how I can use it. Uh, and... So I would have to say, if it's unknown, I'd have to say, is this a string? And once I determine if it's a string, now I can use it as a string. I think this is great, and I will continue to use unknown uh, for a while. Now, I want to say, if you know that something should be one of three types, you should probably do that. Because imagine writing a function where you say, this is unknown. Uh, some property call to your function is unknown. Well, people who are trying to use that function will look at it and say it's unknown, and they don't have any idea what they're supposed to pass in. Now, if you know that it's supposed to be an array or a string, then you can say, this needs to be an array or a string. And now people who are using the function know they have to pass that in. So if you know what types something is supposed to be, you should always define a type. Don't use unknown willy-nilly. And also, don't use any if at all possible. Default props in JSX. So React, uh, most people are familiar with React at this point, but React components have a concept of default props. And a quick rundown of what a prop is in, in JSX, uh, you can think of a prop like an attribute on an HTML element. Uh, you can pass, the parent can pass properties down to the child, and the property can say, okay, I require these properties. So in this case, uh, this greet component requires name as a prop. Well, React has a way where you could say default props. So the default for this greet, if you don't pass down a prop to it, 
it will default to world. Uh, and this works perfectly fine with React, no problems. You and you actually don't have to pass in the prop. So here you could have an attribute on greet called uh, name, but you don't have to because there's a default there already. TypeScript has always had an issue with it because because it, it doesn't know anything about uh, default props. So you've had to do this hack here where you include this question mark and what that means is the type of props, which you see best in here, uh, has name and that's optional. That works all well and good, like you can call it the same way you would here without any trouble. The problem is inside of the component itself, every time you want to use that name prop, you have to say, uh, is it null? And you have to do a non-null assertion, which is what this is right here. Yeah, now you can do something more like this. So this says, well, props will always have name. And I know that because default props has name here. So I know, and now TypeScript knows, because it knows to look at these default props. And now when you're using the component, you won't get an error when you pass this in. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about here is named import refactorings. So this is really nice. Um, you know, quick and dirty. This is one way to import things in JavaScript. This is another way. This way imports only the specific uh, properties and functions that you want. This way imports everything, and you can use it like this. TypeScript uh, provides IDEs, a quick way to uh, refactor to and from these types, so you can see a little video here. Um, you can select all these, and then you can right-click and refactor and put it as dependency like that or you can convert it back to the named imports. This is nice, just useful uh, for everyday things. And that's about it. Uh, another big thing I'd like to point out with TypeScript 3.0 is that there are seemingly no breaking changes. And a lot of times when you get a major update of some library, you can it comes with a lot of breaking changes, so you have to make a significant effort to update. The TypeScript 3.0, uh, the team has put in a lot of work, and there are not very many breaking changes, if any. And I actually tested this out myself, and I went and updated a few of projects, large projects that I work on to TypeScript 3.0, and didn't run into any problems at all. They all still compiled perfectly with the same configuration that I've been using um, up to this point. And that's amazing for me, because... Anytime I can upgrade a dependency without having to make a ton of changes, I'm happy. Uh, I think that if you upgrade and you have to make a ton of changes, it's actually convincing people not to upgrade or to make it a slower upgrade path. And that always leads to having to support old versions of things for, you know, years on end. That about sums it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't use TypeScript before, I really encourage you to go out and try it out for yourself. Uh, you know, after writing large JavaScript projects for a long time, TypeScript was a godsend, and it really changed the game in terms of writing JavaScript. I never thought that writing large JavaScript projects was a good idea until TypeScript came out.